as it has it, we are talking about having the courage of creativity, of grasping the nettle and just making art for yourself. Now, that's not really the true story, is it? That to tell you to not care about what other people think and, you know, just do, do whatever is not going to help you overcome the real issue that is holding you back from fulfilling your full creative potential. There is a story about Henry Fonda, the very famous actor who, you know, was a successful actor, but every time that he went on stage, so his entire working life, apparently he would throw up. So great were the nerves inside. Now I tell you that right at the beginning because I want you to remember that through all of this, we're not talking about making the fear go away. There's a difference between fear and courage. And today we're looking at courage, of having the courage of your convictions, of building within you a burning ball <laughs> of, of creativity that is just ready to pour out whenever you need it. Often we feel this outpouring of creativity when we, when we start something new. You know, in my case, it was when I started this channel, you know, two years ago, that I was enthusiastic about it. I was like, wow, you know, we can do anything. It's kind of cool. And then self-doubt creeps in. You know, then you start to question yourself. And, and in my case, I was kind of like, oh, you know, people say, well, why don't you show your photographs? And, and I would make excuses. Oh, they're not very good. Uh, they are not what this channel is about. They are images that don't really have a place on YouTube. Now, all of those questions, all of those doubts in my mind, you may recognize are external. That I'm talking about something that is beyond my control, when really what's happened is I've bumped into a feeling that Stephen Pressfield in his book, the war of art calls resistance. And this is the first thing that you need to address because it is sabotaging your creativity. I'm sure when I was recounting that story, you know, about the photographs on the channel, that you can probably sympathize, that you recognize some of those tropes in there, that, you know, the feelings of fear, is it going to be good enough? Are people going to laugh at my work? The feelings of, of reluctance to create something or to share it. So I make excuses. You know, we all find a reason why. Oh, the weather's no good today. I'm not going to go and photograph some pictures. Or, you know, I'm just not feeling it and stuff. And we'll address that little idea later on. And then there's, of course, this horrible vicious circle. When you know that you kind of have given in to that feeling of resistance that's pushing you away from being creative and you then feel bad about it. So you go and indulge in something else. You maybe go and eat some ice cream or in my case, maybe go and play some video games or, or grow vegetables. <laughs> Anything to avoid doing the work the creative work. And that's where you can see this idea of courage. We need to have the courage to question these things, to push back against that resistance. Every person is going to really, you know, challenge that in their own different ways. But certainly a lot of people have found that one of the best ways to challenge it is to give it a personality. Think about, you know, in, in Christian religion, the devil is a personification of temptation. So kind of the opposite sort of thing. And when there's a face to it, it's easier to, you know, say, no, I'm not gonna listen to you. And however you find this, I want you to kind of talk to it. <laughs> don't, don't go sit and go, go, you know, sitting in the corner just talking to yourself, right? But say, okay, what if? Or so what might be a better way of putting it. You know, it's this thing. It says, you know, if somebody says, oh, I don't like this picture. All right, so what? Right? If the weather is rubbish today outside for going and taking photographs, so what? Just do it anyway. 
I'm not a big fan of this idea of like, oh, it's 100,000 hours or 10,000 hours or whatever it is, and that will make you a genius and stuff like that. That's not really about practice, but it's really about committing to a process. That's what you need to do. That's what you need to have the courage to do, is to commit to the process, in our case of photography. That doesn't mean just you're going out and taking photographs endlessly without any real point, but focusing, committing to the art form, you know, reading about photography, looking at photo books, looking at documentaries online, watching channels like this, you know, everything that you do with these things is making you feel more engaged with the process of being creative. So going all the way back to Henry Fonda and his unfortunate happenings on the side of the stage, why do you think he did that? Right? Is it because he thought this is going to be the night that they are going to find out that I am not a good actor, right? And imposter syndrome, again, rearing his head. Or do you think he was so nervous, so fearful of doing a good job, that that's what triggered it? And of course, it's the latter. Fear, nervousness, whatever you want to call it. When you are committing and showing the thing that you've created is understandable because you care about it. Recently, I was talking to you know a couple of photographers and, and making choices for exhibitions and showing things like that. And they were, they were all quite worried about what images to show. Not because I think that they were you know, looking for you know, validation, saying, is this a good picture or something like that, or worried about what people thought but because they wanted to show their very best. They wanted to do and create a good impression, to, you know, to make something that had value to them. And that's what you need to understand. So fear on one hand is a wonderful tool to gauge, actually, how far you're progressing. If you're not fearful, if Henry Fonda just breezed on stage, blah, 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 happy as Larry, he doesn't really care. Just as much as, you know, when I used to run lighting for a theatre, you know, when I was a student. And every night I would be just, you know, above on top of the, the go button. And we did we'd like 500 performances. So it's not like I didn't know the show. But every night there was that little spark of fear in there. As soon as you become complacent, that's when stuff goes wrong. So don't worry about the fear in showing the work, in actually doing the work. But you can't let fear of creating it in the first place get in the way. It can't be the excuse for you not to do it in the first place. In a number of creative fields, and of course photography is no exception, there's endless discussion about pro versus amateur, you know, professional versus hobbyist, and what separates the two. And there's always talk about lenses and yada yada yada, and, you know, gear and stuff, right? And uh, that's not that's not really the point. That's not really what separates the pro from the hobbyist. The pro, to go back to a theatre analogy, because yeah, why not? Because I like it, right? Is the actor who gets up on stage, who lets Doctor Footlights sort out his iffy tummy or whatever, right? Because he knows that creative people work, they commit, you recognize that word again, commit, to the process. Now, as a hobbyist, obviously, you don't have to go out onto stage. You don't have to go and take photographs. You can make excuses to just not. And again, to use a, a phrase from the theater, you know, no one is going to die if you don't, right? But what you're doing is you are making it a lot harder for you to be inspired, to find inspiration. Inspiration is not some magical, mystical sort of thing that you can channel, right? That you need like a lightning conductor, right? Woo, walk around in a field, right? The more that you look at photography, the more that you practice, the more that you, you know, think about photography, the more that you ingest it into your every pore, right? The more likely it is that inspiration is going to come. 
because you are thinking about photography on a regular basis. And when you do, then in the background, your mind can turn it around and all sorts of stuff like that, that, that hippie kind of sort of thing. And before you know it, you're out there actually taking photographs and having a whale of a time because you've been exercising your brain the whole time to be creative. You can't choose to be inspired or not, but you can lay the foundation for it to happen more regularly. Reading this book, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, was very handy because it opened up some questions within my mind, rather than looking at it as a how-to guide, right? It made me address certain ways and thought patterns that have been holding me back. And I believed, you know, of course, that they were external factors, but really it was the fear, not the fear of showing the work, but the fear of committing to it, of, of doing the images. And, and when you listen to these videos, when you have advice from other people and stuff, don't see it as a set of rules, you know, a step-by-step -step guide, but more as suggestions that hopefully will put into your own head some questions that when you find the answers for those will give you a set of tools that will be so helpful, so far reaching in their benefits that go beyond any of this kind of step-by-step -step sort of thing because you've discovered your own path through the jungle to that summit of, of creativity. And, and when things do go a little bit squiffy, you know, when they do go a bit awry, or you find yourself ah, down in the doldrums or what have you, then you are equipped to find your way out of this again. It's, it is so liberating to feel this. I, I love it. I want, I want to hear you know, from you, just let me know in the comments all these things about like, you know, a piece of advice, you know, do something every day that scares you. What's your line in the interests of full disclosure? If you want to see the very first video that I ever released on this channel that I was extremely <laughs> fearful about making, then check it out right here. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.